It's one week before Thanksgiving in the brittle, dry West Texas rolling plains. Outside the Midland International Airport, law enforcement is in a steady formation. The Patriot Guard keeps watch. And inside the terminal, a small crowd gathers for the arrival of American heroes. It was a dream come true. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you. Who got this one? I did. Congratulations, Thank man. You. That's great. Thanks, man. It's my first year. I appreciate it. A decade has passed since this man, Terry Johnson, born and raised with a fierce love for the outdoors, felt the surge of pride and admiration for those young Americans returning from war with battle scars, broken bones, and bruised souls. Johnson began the nation's first program to share hunting with veterans. For the last 10 years, Show of Support Hunt for Heroes has been the blueprint of dozens of similar efforts across the country. Johnson continues his quiet campaign of thanking his heroes. Josh Wineland and Jessica, 101st Airborne. A few years ago, the Show of Support organization decided to honor the wives of these brave heroes as well. Scout salute. It is a carefully planned weekend of praise, gifts, honor, and laughter. Therapy of sorts for dedicated couples who've seen too many hospital walls, too much heartache, and too much hardship. You guys are the backbone of this country. For this brief period of time, the best of West Texas surrounds the best of America for the greatest of hero celebrations. I don't know how you can make it better, but God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. It's for there is much to do even before the white-tailed deer hunt begins. There are marching bands, barbecues, a banquet, and even a parade. They won't stop being our heroes. We love these men, we love their families. Now show us how to do that even in a better way. Thank you for this outpouring of love, and now we look to you to comfort our hearts. And we pray this in the glorious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. What we know uh, by sources is that this, uh, the group of soldiers who are here for the Hunt for Heroes were in town. They were on their way to the Horseshoe Complex where tonight was to be the show of support dinner. They were on a flatbed trailer and what we understand is they crossed the, tra the train tracks and were struck by a train. At just after 4.30 in the afternoon, in a moment that will forever be etched in the minds of so many in this proud West Texas community. A celebration becomes tragedy. Four men, only hours before their deer hunt was begun, were killed when a locomotive slammed into the parade float they were aboard. William Lubers, Gary Stauffer, Lawrence Boyden, and Joshua Michael were to be featured on the show of Support Hunt for Heroes television series. And no one in their wildest imagination could have predicted this terrible end to a hunt that had yet to begin. Marine Corps, Stuffer, and Catherine. For the next few minutes, and all the time we have, this edition of Hunt for Heroes will honor four fallen heroes whose simple hope was to merely go deer hunting. Sergeant Josh Michael, 101st Airborne Army! It was a day of unparalleled adoration that in one terrible brief instant took the lives of four Americans and left so many with so much unthinkable pain and sorrow. Stay with us. We don't know why. The questions of why in many ways will never be answered. 
But we do know this. This is Midland, Texas. This is the kind of response that we give to heroes, to those who matter to us. Somewhere within the boundaries of the human soul, overwhelming grief finds its way to the surface. An entire city is forever scarred by a tragedy that stole four American heroes. Four fathers, husbands, and sons, leaving four families to somehow find the strength to carry on. We know that Middle Memorial Hospital has been put on code one. That means they want everybody there, all hands on deck. We don't know all the details on it right now. We know that there's a bad accident and on the way up here. As people in Midland struggle with the burden of the most tragic event in the history of this West Texas city, every American needs to know the story of these four heroes who met the enemy abroad and forever raised the stars and stripes a little higher. Army Sergeant Major William Lubers. Of the quarter century he spent in the Army, 21 years was in the elite fighting unit, Special Forces. This quiet family man was in his second deployment to Afghanistan when the team was caught in an overwhelming enemy fire. Lubers was leading a team through the dust, smoke and confusion of close combat when a bullet shattered his arm. The only thing is, that injury fueled his passion to inflict further damage to the extremist idiots and cowards fighting for a twisted sense of religion. William Lubers recovered and returned to the conflict, and while conducting patrols in southern Afghanistan, he was struck and injured, then evacuated, spending months recovering at Walter Reed Army Hospital. The military awarded Lubers three bronze stars and a purple heart, among other commendations. William J. Lubers leaves behind his wife, Tiffany, and their two children. Chief Warrant Officer Stouffer, did I get right? All right. Chief Warrant Officer Gary Stauffer was a United States Marine for 17 years, serving in Albania, Kosovo, Afghanistan, and twice in Iraq. It was during a resupply mission in Afghanistan that Stauffer's vehicle was hit by multiple IEDs. That was two years ago, and Stauffer was still recovering from the attack. This hunting trip was to be a break from the intense therapy, a time to rekindle old memories he had hunting with his dad in the mountains of Pennsylvania. Gary's enduring legacy as a Marine, a husband, and a father will always be held as a model for those he left behind. Sergeant Major Boyden. After 24 years in the Army, Lawrence Boyvin retired, a career that placed him in some of the world's most dangerous locations. It was April 2004, during a tour of duty in Iraq. While providing training and support, his unit was swarmed in a surprise attack. Lawrence was hit by shrapnel, but continued to return fire and rescue Marines and Army personnel caught in the attack that would later become known as the Battle for Fallujah. Another RPG ripped through Boyvin's left side, but somehow he stayed on his feet, rescuing the wounded and providing cover. Remarkably, on that terrible day, Lawrence Boyvin had reached down deep inside for the courage few could ever muster. He received a silver star and a purple heart for that day in Iraq. Sergeant Josh Michael, 101st Airborne Army! Even before he ever joined the military, Joshua Michael worked as a paramedic in Amarillo, Texas. He had just finished a long shift overnight in the Texas Panhandle when Joshua saw his life change before his eyes. The cowardly attacks of that morning in September ignited a heroic passion that would lead Joshua to Iraq. While there, he suffered three separate bomb blasts. It was the last one that sent him home for good. Medically retired, 
Joshua Michael received two Purple Hearts and three Armor Combat Support Medals. William Lubers, Gary Stauffer, Lawrence Boyvin, Joshua Michaels. Four American heroes who only wanted to go deer hunting, but on November 15, 2012, lost their lives in a tragic accident in Midland, Texas. Several decades ago, President Ronald Reagan found the words to comfort a nation in mourning. His profound words say it best. Your loved ones were daring and brave, and they had that special grace, that special spirit that says, give me a challenge and I'll meet it with joy. They wished to serve and they did. They served all of us. Show of Support Hunt for Heroes has grown from taking two warriors on a deer hunt to hosting 25 heroes and their wives. Well before the hunt begins, the city of Midland, Texas, focuses their efforts on spoiling 25 couples, showering them with dinners, gifts, praise, and most of all, pure love. You guys all volunteered. That's what makes y'all special. You guys are the backbone of this country. It's early on November 15th out at the Vietnam Veterans Memorial. Patriot Guard Bill McNeil shares the memories of his fallen classmates and close friends. His words are a touching tribute to heroes of an earlier generation. Show of Support organizers learned years ago not to put a timetable on any of their events. These warriors need to be left to their own pace, their own processing. As the day continues, they are honored with a key to the city by the mayor of Midland. More sights, more sounds, and more faces of people who can't say enough times. Thank you. It's nice to feel appreciated. For our husbands to feel appreciated. On the afternoon of November 15th, two flatbed trailers are parked outside the hotel in downtown Midland. It's on these floats, as in years past, where the heroes will ride to the Horseshoe Arena, where a huge banquet is planned for the evening. All the way from the highway to the entrance of the Horseshoe, the route is lined with flags. The sheriff's posse takes his place to welcome the entourage. As the parade begins moving west on Wall Street, nothing seems out of order. A sheriff's escort, local high school marching band, and hundreds of people pay tribute on this warm fall afternoon. More flags and last minute preparations at the Horseshoe. More crowds along the parade route. As the floats begin to make the left turn onto Garfield Street, to all those aboard, to all those in Midland, Texas, hearts filled with gratitude are about to be shattered with terrible news. What we know uh, by sources is that this, uh, the group of soldiers who are here for the Hunt for Heroes were in town. They were on their way to the Horseshoe Complex where tonight was to be the show of support dinner. They were on a flatbed trailer and what we understand is they crossed the, tra the train tracks and were struck by a train. We are told there are multiple fatalities in this particular crash. Uh, there are law enforcement, there are sheriff's deputies, there are DPS here. TxDOT is on the scene, Midland City. Confusion and disbelief grip those waiting at the Horseshoe Arena. One after another, the faces here reflect the terrible news. All become consumed with the ominous, unshakable sense that something has gone terribly wrong. 
We don't know all the details on it right now. We know that there's a bad accident. So let's go to the Lord with it. All right, y'all. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, God, we come to you, Lord, in thanksgiving. And at the same time, God, we ask that you just hold all of those that might be injured, God. The parade float for the uh, Hunt for Heroes event tonight. They were on a parade route going to the Horseshoe. And apparently the second float that crossed over uh, was struck by an eastbound train. As the sun continues to set on the western horizon, the scope of the tragedy takes shape. Every available ambulance, paramedic, and first responder is called into action. Were it not for the quick response of the veterans and wives on board the floats, more lives might have been lost. A city is in shock, and soon the entire nation will share the sadness of this unthinkable tragedy. It was a, a horrible, a horrible day. A city, a nation awakes in disbelief. Four American heroes who survived so much defending our lives, our way of life, our very liberty itself, taken away from their families in a terrible accident. William Lubers, Gary Stauffer, Lawrence Boyvin, and Joshua Michael, four fighting men who only wanted to answer the invitation for a West Texas deer hunt. Good morning, my name's Wes Perry, I'm the mayor of Midland, and I'm here with you, and uh, just appreciate you so much coming out. I think As officials look for answers, Survivors, friends, and patriots gather, looking for hope. And across the street, on the fourth floor of the hotel, six survivors of the train accident do their best to find words following the nightmare of the night before. We don't want anyone to, to feel bad. We just want everyone to carry on this wonderful tradition and keep it going because it's so important and, and it means so much. You gotta keep keeping on and just love on your families and thank God that we have every day together and that we that we were not one of the ones that passed and just try to try to be thankful for every day. All eyes are on Midland right now, but the world needs to know this town. It, there was so much support. I mean, there was people just coming up saying, here, here's a ham at the hospital because that's all they could do. But they were turning people away because they had too many people that wanted to donate blood because they asked for blood. A Marine for more than 20 years, Matthew Bennick and his wife Tara joined Air Force veteran Chris Doggett and his wife Brooke, Mark and Amy Juarez. Amy is also a Marine. The Juarez couple, who have family in Midland, was seated on the float one row in front of the four who lost their lives. I have to go back to my base and get seen by the uh, bone specialist down there for him to check my back and my ribs out. And as soon as I get a chance, I'm coming back here to spend Thanksgiving with the rest of my family because I'm very proud of this town. This is why we're doing this, is so that they know how much we appreciate them and their hard work. As shock turns to exhaustion, three couples reach out to a city to offer gratitude of their own, and each deeply saddened for the families of those lost. Find the words that this effort of honoring America's heroes never stops. This program and the energy that this town has needs to spread across America. Don't quit. Keep going. Keep going. We will be better. It will be better. I just encourage each one of you to reach out, love on those folks that are hurting the most, and we will be better. God's blessings to you all and God's blessings to these families especially. For the families who have lost or have had members critically injured, I'd like for them to know that their heroes were here because they were being honored and loved and supported for their contributions and their sacrifices for our country. And 
although they suffered a tragic accident, that they were here because they are heroes. And they left us being loved and being honored for the heroes that they are. William Louvers, Gary Stauffer, Lawrence Boyden, and Joshua Michael, they honored us by the manner in which they lived their lives. We will never forget these men, four heroes who slipped the surly bonds of earth to touch the face of God. <laughs>